Now what makes a cafe racer, honestly, is the cow. You could buy something like this off eBay for, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, but it's way cooler to custom make them. We use some Eastwood tools to do it, so let me show you how it's done. Next up, we have one of the most exciting pieces of the bike and something that's gonna define the looks the most out of almost anything on the bike, and that is the rear cow. And we're gonna do it out of metal rather than fiberglass. We're not taking the easy way out here. We're gonna do some actual metal work to get this thing onto the bike. Now, there's three pieces as far as I'm concerned. This piece we have right here, this is gonna be the bottom piece of our cow. This is gonna follow our rear hoop. So we're gonna need a bend here and a bend here. That is gonna follow that shape. And then we have a half circle here. Our brake light is gonna ride along that, looking from the top down. Now, other than this piece, there are two more pieces that we're going to work with today. There's gonna to be the front of the cowl. That's the part my butt is gonna kinda of sit against when I'm in the saddle there. And there's also gonna be the covering that goes over to the top. We'll get to those two in a second here. First, we have to nail down our bottom before we do anything. So we're gonna get this cut out. We're gonna take this over to the slip roll and we're gonna bend those in it to follow the contour of our frame. Quick tip, if those edges pull up along your cut at all, all you have to do, grab a body hammer, lay this down on a flat surface, and tap them back flat. Now that we have this piece out, you can see where our bends need to be. There's one right here, and then at the edge down here, I kinda wanna follow this one down there, just so we can get that shape, and everything mounts up nice and smooth. Looks good. Let's head over to the slip roll. After you figure out where your bends are gonna need to be, you can make some lines and that's gonna be where the center point of your bend is gonna lay. Here's our 48 inch slip roll. Now it's called that because you can open up this top bar and slip your pieces in and out. Now in our case, we're not gonna need that just because we have those two light bends, but if you wanted to roll this 360 degrees into a tube, you could because this bar pops out and you could slide your tube off this way. We have this locked in, let's come down here and make our adjustments. First thing you wanna do is make sure your piece is nice and perpendicular with the rollers here and make sure your roll is gonna be nice and even with your piece. And then you can come to this handle here. This is gonna be the clamping pressure in between these two front rollers. So we're just gonna tighten that up. Make sure that, that our piece doesn't slip in there. And this one is going to bring this back roller up and down and that's what's going to give you your radius. Now we don't want to start too crazy here. We just want to make sure it's touching our piece and snug. And then we can start rolling and add more pressure as needed. And as I go here, I'm just adding a little bit of pressure. And I personally like to go a little further than needed because I always feel like it's easier to bend it back out a little bit by hand if you need to. Now real quick, let me get the seat out of the way because as it sits right now, this kind of butts up against it. But, oh yeah, for a first pass, can't be upset about that. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get some lines down for this lower radius we have to make here. We're gonna do the same thing for that and try to follow that curve as well. A slip roller makes this job super easy. Highly recommend having one of these in your shop. The one we were working with was the biggest, baddest one of them all, but we offer them in a couple smaller sizes as well. So I was a little aggressive with the slip roller, but that's okay. Like I said, I kind of like to adjust these by hand, at least when you're working with 
thin sheet metal like this, you can. I'm happy with where that sits. Next step, going to involve following the back of our seat pan, this front plate here, sort of some extra support for our seat pan as well. Uh, we're going to cut that out. We're going to get this tacked on the front here, and then we can move on to the cover over the top. Now, just doing some layout work for the front part here. As you guys could probably tell, this is going to really define that sort of slope back shape of the bike, that really fast shape. You want this to kind of flow backwards. If it's too tall, you get kind of like a hump there, and if it's too low, you get sort of like an open area. So this is important. I spent a lot of time looking at the profile of the bike, making sure this is exactly what I want. What I'm gonna go with is seven inches tall. I think that height best follows the gas tank line back and dissipates into the rear. So that is what we're going with. We're gonna get this down, we're gonna cut it out, and then we can tack the two together. Quick tech tip here, you could scribe with a pair of dividers. If you're doing a half circle like this, you just hold the one end down and then sort of swing the other one around. Perfect half circle on a piece of sheet metal. So what you're looking at here is the bottom piece and the front piece together. Now I already double checked and made sure that the angle of these two is looking good and that this front piece lines up with the back of our seat pan. Just a magnet holding these together right now, but you can probably tell what's going to come next. I'm going to tack these together, we're going to double check, and then we'll come back later and make sure this is more secure, and then we can move on. You can see at the front of the cow, I left a little bit of lip there for my weld to lay on. That's a little bit better for, uh, for me to grind down later on, uh, rather than to have these meet at a perfect corner like that and to have that weld sort of eat away at that corner. So this is the way that I went. Now, if you're good with a TIG welder, and as you guys know, I'm no artist when it comes to TIG welding, you can do that perfect corner, but with a MIG welder, this works too. So now that we have this piece, we could sort of work with this and start to make our cover that's gonna go over the top. Now, this is a bit of a weird shape. We have a radius here and a different radius here. So that's gonna have to flare out at the back kind of. And here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna use a paper template like this one right here. Now, I have this extra wide, just two pieces of big paper taped together. I'm gonna sit this in the middle. And what I'm gonna do is without pushing this and stretching this joint at all, I'm just gonna roll it back and forth with the help of my cameraman Dave here. And as it rolls back and forth, I'm gonna trace this line where it contacts the paper with the Sharpie, and then we'll have our template on this piece of paper. So let's get to it. I'll tape this on here just to double check. So I have the shape, just going through it with the electric shears, cutting it out, trimming it up with the aviation snips, as you can see. The edges were a little bit bent from the snips, but uh, I flattened them out with a hammer there, and then we head over to the slip roller. Now, once we were in the slip roller, you could see I have those black edges on the side there. Those parts of the coverings actually need to remain flat, so our bend only needed to be in the middle. You can see I avoided those areas, put no shape into them at all, which is exactly what we wanted. So the covering for our cal is Damn close, really happy with where this is at. Just a little bit of breathing room on either side. We're gonna come back to that later and try to work that into shape a little bit better and get that a perfect fit. But for now, we need to work on the inside and mounting this up to the bike and how that is gonna work. And in order to do that, you can see we have a bunch of empty space here. We're gonna need something to mount to, so we're gonna run a couple bars across here, drill some holes in those drill some holes in these, weld on some hardware to mount to on the bottom of this pan, and then we can come back to the top of the covering for this thing. So what I did next is really nothing special, just some eighth inch steel coupons. Cut them to size perfectly so that they fit flush with the top of the frame. 
then broke out the MIG welder, got them welded in there on the flat spots of the frame so everything sit nice and evenly. Then I bust out the drill, drilled some holes right down the middle of those coupons for mounting up to the cowl. Then I put the cowl on top, came up from the bottom with the Sharpie to mark where I needed to drill on the cowl. Then I drilled that out on the cowl as well to match. Everything lined up perfectly, looked good. So right here, I'm just welding on the hardware to the cowl. Now, I did this upside down. As you can see, I'm welding the nut rather than the bolt head itself. And that's because I don't want to mess up the look under the tail of the motorcycle. And I think a couple bolt heads there would look a lot cleaner than if it was upside down and a stud was poking through in, to the bottom and in, on top of the tire. Uh, this is really easy. Just bolt everything down, tack on either side of the nut, and then you're all good to go. And here's a hot tip. Be careful not to weld the actual threads because you do need to back the bolt out. Now, welding on the actual covering for the cowl and completing this piece was a hell of a job. Uh, it didn't want to line up perfectly because even though we have the same radius cut, one is at one angle and the other radius we're trying to get to is at a different angle entirely. So the covering sort of flares out as you go back. It's not going to line up perfectly. It would have taken us hours in the slip roll to get a piece that lined up perfectly. But we just rolled with what we have and we stretched it out and tacked it in place as we go. And it ended up being really nice. I made sure nothing warped like I always do. Same technique I always do. Hold it in place, tack it, let it cool down, do another tack, let it cool down and just stitch my way through the weld. So the cowl is in place after all that work. It's all tacked together, nothing's moving around, and I couldn't resist. I had to head over to the bike, bolt it up to the frame, see what we got, and I was super pleased. I put the seat pan on, and you can see the two just flow together perfectly. I left that chunky rear section of the seat pan uncut just for this step, because now we can put the two together and I can trim the seat pan to the cowl perfectly. Got my Sharpie line down, and then I bust out the cutoff wheel to trim the seat pan to shape. I know I'm throwing a lot of tools at you guys, but I used a disc sander to clean off some of those cutoff wheel cuts. They can look a little bit messy. The disc sander helps. Now that I got the fit up out of my system, I head back to the weld table just to finish weld this thing up. Just slowly go through, tack, stitch, wait for it to cool down. There's a lot of fine tuning in this process, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that, but just work my way around the cowl, make sure everything's nice and locked in, good penetration throughout. Then I bust out the grinder, clean them up a little bit. As they say, a grinder and some paint will make a welder what he ain't, and that's exactly the case for this. There's a lot of fine tuning and there's a lot of cleaning up of welds to do, but this is all gonna be worth it in the end. So uh, yeah, I think this thing turned out awesome. The fit is perfect with the frame. The fit is perfect with the seat, and if you would have asked me did I think it would turn out this good at the start of this project, I would have said no, but I'm super pleased with how this thing turned out, and it just goes to show you that with the right tools, a little bit of research, some good materials, and a lot of patience, you guys can do this as well. It's really not that hard, especially when you're working on stuff that's kind of cool like this old CB750. Stay tuned for the next episode because that one is going to be a good one. As you guys probably remember, the tank on this bike is just a disaster. It's rusty inside. We got dents on body lines and we are going to address all of that. It is definitely going to be a good one. But as far as this video, leave me a like, leave me a comment. If you like something you saw, leave me a comment. If you don't like what you saw, go ahead and leave me a comment as well because that's what YouTube is all about. Let me know. And if you're interested in any of the tools we used in this video, check the description. They're all going to be linked down there. Thanks for watching. I'm JD. Keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.